No intro since I don't want to waste your time, straight onto the guides. If there's one thing you take away from this video, it's this fundamental concept with Sojun. Explosive angled pressure. Utilize your power slide to quickly enter flanks and abuse your vertical mobility as much as possible to end up on high grounds, alongside utilizing your disruptor shot and real gun and duels. In the wise words of Spylo, assistant coach for Overwatch League team London Spitfire, Sojun's major advantage over our counterparts, such as Soldier, is her real gun and vertical mobility. Speaking of Spylo, I have I have sent him an early version of the Sojourn Guide so that I can make some early changes so you guys get the best possible Sojourn Guide that will trump other YouTubers. Anyways, onto the weapon. Sojourn's weapon, the Realme Gun, makes Sojourn fire projectile bullets that give the gun energy and allow Sojourn to fire a real gun that deals 130 damage on body shot with full charge. Each bullet that you land on the body will give you 5 energy, giving you 10 energy if you land headshots. Let's start off with breakpoints. As shown by the swanky graphics by Stylosa in the background, you only need to charge up to 65 energy to be able to one shot body shot a 200 HP squishy hero. This means that by doing some math, Sojourn's weapon does roughly 9 bullet points of damage and by the power of editing and looking through frames, Sojourn's fire rate is 800 RPM. This means that Soldier deals 120 DPS. For comparison, Soldier has a slower fire rate but higher damage, dealing 180 DPS, 50% higher than Soldier. Sombra has a faster fire rate but lower damage, dealing 160 DPS. This might seem low for Soldier, but in reality, when combined with your railgun shot which is burst damage, alongside your other abilities, this tends to balance out her weaker primary fire. A key tenant with Soldier's weapon is to decide what sight lens to play, which depends upon the composition you're running and what the enemy team are running. Generally speaking, even up against your hitscan counterparts, such as Soldier, you typically want to maintain mid-range sightlines, maybe slightly shorter, in order to land your projectile shots, and especially up against snipers who will completely outrange you. Here's assistant coach for the San Francisco Shock, Kazores, going into more detail about Soldier and sightlines. To make it easier to hit, just make sure you're playing in those medium to close ranges on her. Playing in these close ranges will make it so much easier to beam down your targets. She's good at dueling flankers and taking these small off angles, so don't be afraid to go quite close to the enemy, but make sure you have a way to back out. But if you play in those close ranges, her left click will feel infinitely better. To add more depth, I'll give another visual instance on a different map. For example, on Havana first point attack, trying to play indoor areas where the sniper has no sightline, or using power slide to path and get closer to the enemy sniper, which I'll get onto later, will be the most optimal way to get value out of your weapon. Alternatively, because you have no fall off, against compositions that you outrange, look to maintain slightly longer sightlines, as Spalo explains here with the example of Cassidy. If you're going to take this angle here, why are you pressing W? Why did you go from nice corner, nice angle here, to I'm on top of point? Maintain the sightline and that's all you need to do. You outrange this comp heavily outside of Zenyatta and random Faro rockets. There is no reason for you to go, I'm going to close the distance against these guys whatsoever, especially with the diva on the field. I'll go more in depth on Sojourn's overall playstyle in the latter sections of the video. With your secondary fire rail gun, think of it as a buffed version of Soldier's Helix Rocket. You deal more damage, it's hit scan, there's no cooldown aside from shooting to charge it, and it can headshot. As a result, think about charging your rail gun by shooting tanks or shields, then looking to force a duel onto a DPS player, making them 70 HP before the duel even begins, or even straight up one-shotting them. A key thing Spyro mentioned to me was that rail gun was very important in taking duels, which makes sense considering your primary fire isn't great. For example, on Route 66 third point attack, charge your railgun when you're busy closing distance, then take the flank by the lorry, looking to beam someone with your railgun from high ground, or if someone is already there, you would beam them obviously. As a result, you win this area of the map, giving your team map control, simply allowing you to continue to shoot from high ground on a different angle to your team. Please abuse how easy railgun is to charge and how much damage it deals before it likely gets nerfed. It seems to be a very powerful dual tool if you can aim, so abusing this use of railgun, as with the example I just described, will give you immense value. Before I end off this section, Hiskasaur is giving similar advice alongside some visual examples in the background. Make sure you try to charge this by hitting tanks, and if you charge it up all the way and you go in the enemy backline, you can try to one shot a squishy DPS or a healer. So make sure you're sitting back, shooting a tank, and then with Sojourn's good mobility, get in there and try to find the one shot. Once you get the hang of it, it can be extremely strong. Just to clarify and develop Kasora's ideas, just be careful of power sliding straight into backline squishies unless your comp is built for inting, such as Brawl Dive or Talon Dive, which I will elaborate on in the composition section. 
but generally speaking, the risk, especially at higher ranks, just isn't worth the reward of getting that kill, as you'll be left with no mobility tool, the entire enemy team will be looking at you, you might not have cover, and you might not even hit the shot in the first place. Soldier's first ability, slide in into your DMs. Make soldier and perform a ground slide that can be cancelled into a decently high vertical jump with a 7 second cooldown. Power slide is key to the fundamental of soldier and applying rapid, explosive pressure in the mid fight. Power slide essentially gives soldier comparable mobility of a flanker such as Genji with his dash or Winston with his leap, but unlike those flankers, soldier can play longer ranges comparable to a soldier, which is probably why Spyro says that soldier is just a different soldier, a more aggressive burst one at that. However, unlike soldier, a key fundamental to soldier is the vertical mobility behind a power slide, allowing you to reach places Soldier can't, or even if he can reach them, it'll take him a year to do so. So, what are some good examples of flanks Soldier can use power slide for? Well, the best flanks often allow Soldier to reach high ground, or at least a good angle with cover at the end. For example, on Route 66 first point attack, you could slide through the cave and finish off with a vertical jump onto gas station. From here, you could either pressure their team by the corner if they're holding close, even using the stop the shots, or more likely, you'll look to pressure their supports. Whilst obvious to state, please time this flank with when either team engages, considering that plays like these are very aggressive to make and it's very easy to feed. I'll blitz through a handful more examples because this concept is super important and fundamental to how Sojourn is played. On Jungatown first point defense, you slide through the room with the mega and jump onto the back high ground, pincering the enemy team from behind. Again, make sure the timing is on point. On King's Row first point defense, slide through hotel when the enemy team pushes, finishing by the statue or cancelling your slide early to use the hotel as cover. On Ilios Ruins, you can slide and jump across the catwalk or quickly rotate the coast. The choice is yours, and hopefully by now, you're seeing how Soldier's burst mobility allows her to take lethal angles more quickly than a soldier can. The last example I'll use will be on Havana third point attack or defense. You can look to power slide up onto the high ground and again, take an angle that a hero like Soldier just can't do in the same amount of time. For defensive uses to power slide, I initially theorized that you won't need it as much in Overwatch 2 considering there's less players on the field to contest your angles, but Spolo mentioned to me that a slide cooldown feels longer than it actually is and how you need it more defensively than you think. He mentioned that he liked using it aggressively to take an angle and then using it defensively wherever possible since shifting forward only works if your team is baiting aggressive attention or you have a pocket or if the enemy team simply can't reach that high ground. Soldier's second ability, Citron's EMP from Plants vs Zombies is a burst of energy that snares and deals up to 200 damage if stood in the roughly 3.5 second duration of that ability. It also has a sizable 15 second cooldown. Because of how versatile the swap the shot is, I've managed to distill it down into the acronym DUCKS, which I'll go through with visual examples. Spyro did mention that the DUCKS acronym was too long, but I've decided to keep it in because DUCKS, you know but I have shortened the less important sections. The D stands for dueling. Due to the damage and slow of the swap the shot, in conjunction with your burst mobility in your power slide and your burst damage in your railgun, the swap the shot can be a powerful tool for winning duels on key flanks. Referring back to that Rook 66 example by the lorry, power sliding first whilst you're shooting, then jumping up to fire your swap the shot can help make tracking your shots easier, and also landing that railgun damage as follow up. If you're wondering about whether to use power slide first or use your swap the shot first, don't worry about it too much, as both of their ups and downs. For most players, I would recommend power sliding first to keep up the fluidity of your gameplay. The U stands for ultimates. Essentially, combo your disruptor shot with ultimates such as Sigma's Flux, Tracer's Pulse Bomb, or even a Reese's new Terra Lance to allow her to land that full 250 damage. The C stands for chokes, probably the most conventional case used for disruptor shot. For example, on Hanamura first point defense, firing your disruptor shot when the enemy team start to walk through the choke would be a great way for your team to capitalize and punish whoever walks through. However, referring back to the D in the acronym, if the enemy team aren't really utilising the choke and are playing a bit more split, you'd probably want to use the swap the shot on jewels on flanks and areas around the choke instead, with the window on Hanamura being an example. The K stands for kiting. Essentially, if you're playing Sojourn in a more static comp that wants to play at range and is a bit more mobile, you can fire your disruptor shot to kite backwards. Kiting is just a synonym for retreating. For example, on Route 66 first point defense, if your team get dove by the gas station, you fire your disruptor shot to kite back. And finally, the S stands for supports. This is is by far the most aggressive use of the swap to shot and will likely be one of the most common. Referring back to those power slide examples, of which I'll use Route 66 for now, you will be at the perfect angle to get a juicy to swap the shot onto their backline to deal some serious damage. Before I end off, do make sure that you properly use the swap to shot as it is on a lengthy 15 second cooldown. Sojourn's ultimate, broken as shit, 
make Sojourn also charge her railgun with her shots piercing enemies this time. According to Stylosa, 7 fully charged shots deal 910 damage, and 11 shots at 61 charge deal 780 damage. That's a lot of damage! Do be aware that these shots do not pierce through shields. I won't keep this long since our ultimate is pretty simple, but think of it as a buffed primary fire, used in the same way Soldier will use Tactical Visor. Use it to enhance the lethality of your flanks, of which I've shown multiple options prior, but unlike Tactical Visor, Soldier's ultimate actually requires mechanics to use, and there is the possibility that you do end up missing the majority of your shots. In order to resolve this, have Trigger Discipline. Don't spam your shots as soon as they gain a decent amount of charge. Take half a second to readjust your crosshair when firing your normal primary fire to then land that railgun shot. Better players won't have to do this, but it is a surefire way in at least guaranteeing some value out of your ultimate if your aim isn't great. As a side note, don't bother sitting main trying to pierce the enemy team. It's likely that they will have a shield, and even if they don't, sitting main praying that you land some pierce shots just means that you're shooting from one angle with your team, it's just not worth it. Now moving on to positioning with Sojourn. Anyone who's been a long time viewer of mine would know about the four rules I've often put in my guides, taken from Coach Nata. Cover, lines of sight, or LOS, distance from angles, and aggressive or defensive rotational options. To explain this, I will again refer to some of the power sight angles I've mentioned before, and since I've used this map a lot already, let's go back to that Route 66 example. You have the gas station sign as cover, or the high ground itself. With LOS, you have plenty of it, being able to see the enemy supports or anyone past the first corner. With distance from angles, this just means how far you are away from being flanked or attacked, and as it seems, you have a decent amount of distance to escape from danger. With rotational options, you're essentially looking for any route that can make you play more aggressive, or any route that can make you play more defensively. In this case, you can drop off the high ground and still hold an aggressive angle on the gas station, or you can drop off and retreat back to the cave, or grab the mega underneath the gas station. Finally, to round off this video, compositions and playstyles. As a precursor, I know that compositions, such as Double Shield, are now dead in Overwatch 2, but the general playstyle of playing from distance, utilising ranged poke, with heroes like Zen, Mercy, Ash, Hanzo, Widow and Sigma, still does exist. With that being said, let's start off with Sojourn in more poker-based comps. As mentioned prior, with the Disruptor Shot, use it to kite from close-range encounters, especially against dive compositions. Speaking of going against dive compositions, with Sojourn, similar to our more static DPS counterparts, you want to balance between stacking main and having no angle at all, and and fully isolating yourself on a hard off angle, as Spilo explains here, with a clip on Basan I've used about a thousand times. You don't want to position on top of the team because it allows the enemy team to be able to dive you without taking damage because there's only one LOS where you're actually putting damage. They can hide from this damage in here, they can hide from the damage here, they can hide from the damage here, they can hide from the damage here. Whereas if you position just slightly here, not too much, where you can still be harmony orb, armor pack, you can poke this pre-jump, this pre-jump, this pre-jump, this no longer has cover, this no longer has cover, this has significantly less cover, this has significantly less cover, and you can even peek down this hallway a little bit easier. Dive wants to corral you. Stacking against dive is not the answer. It is being in positions where you can peel for each other, but you can poke out dive before the fight happens. So you don't want to be isolated, but you don't want to be stacked. Note that you can be more aggressive than how the Cassidy was playing due to your increased mobility and that in Overwatch 2, there will be less heroes to contest your angles. Referring back to Sojourn's high burst mobility in her slide, you can straight away play more aggressively after that dive has happened. When playing with dive or poke dive compositions, look to get a good angle onto where your one tank will be engaging onto. This area is typically called a kill box. For example, on Temple of Anubis second point defense, you might see a lot of teams try and rotate into cave, which is where your kill box will be. Say you're playing a dive tank, such as Ball, Doomfist or Winston, who will try and engage onto that kill box. That is when you want to follow up. You could power slide through main and fire your railgun and disruptor shot onto that kill box, potentially landing a kill. When playing with brawl or brawl dive compositions, you'll want to rotate as a team to close the distance to allow a rush onto the enemy team or just force the objective to then close the distance. His Temporal, a professional Overwatch coach, detailing how the composition works on Ilios Lighthouse, explaining Sojourn's role in the comp. We'll take cover to minimize poke because our only real source of poke tool ourselves would be Sojourn. Sojourn has a hit scan weapon with some range to it, the railgun. She's gonna have some poke. No one else has meaningful poke. It's still gonna be extra important to go, hey, let's use natural cover to force the opponents to rotate in such a way that they can threaten angles on us, that they can can shoot around the cover, those sorts of things. And let's use objective pressure to make them spread out in such a way where, hey, they wanna go like this to get angles. And now you've given us someone we can run over, being the Sigma in this example. And what you're looking at for this dive
dive is some pretty good tools. Your sojourn can do her power slide to go in and then pop up and shoot some shots. And there's not going to be a Winston bubble like there historically would have been in the mirror for her to go for some of those nice headshots, for her to throw down a slow that would slow the mirror or slow whoever you're trying to pounce off. Well, that's it for the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. And if this video helped to raise your IQ, do be sure to share it with your friends to also raise theirs. Until next time.